man, anything longer than that, and you rarely do it. I mean, gravity made waves because they had that one continuous shot for, what was it, 13 minutes or something like that, but it was always moving. It was always moving, so it wasn't static. It didn't feel like it. Uh, the second thing is the video, videos themselves are too long. Uh, you'll see, I mean, I've seen this. People will upload videos that are 30, 40, and 50 minutes, and it's full of raw video, and that's great. Uh, but how, how many people have watched a 50-minute video start to finish of just like raw storm video? And this is a room full of storm people. I mean, I mean, I guarantee you, not, not many have done it. So you, if you want to get your point across, you need to shorten up those videos. We'll, 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 we'll resolve these all in a second. Videos don't have a point or introduce too much fluff. I mean, uh, I, an example I use, I mean, you, you'll capture a great lightning strike on video. You know, you're, you're driving down the road and bam, right there, transformer pops. Well, a lot of people are going to give you a video that's going to give you 50 seconds of driving before that lightning strike. Perhaps to build tension, I don't know. But, but if you're just wanting to uh, show off the lightning strike, it's better to give you, you know, you know, one second, two seconds, three seconds, boom. And then, and then you know, you, go, you re rack it, you go at 50% speed and 25% speed, and you got a 30 second video full of action that people want to see, and they'll actually probably eventually share it. So, you know, you don't, don't, don't make sure your videos have a point to them and don't give it too much fluff. And, you know, the, the fourth one, this one actually is, all, is this one's, uh, Something a lot of people don't do is it's just raw and untouched. You know, they'll just upload it straight from the camera, put it in the timeline, and then export it. And that's great, but you know, if you want to have, produce great quality stuff, you really need to do what I'm about to suggest. So, how can they be awesome? Quick, snappy edits with shots not holding too long. You know, if you watch uh, video, the best web videos, they, they, these people are masters at uh, editing. And, and you know, you're going to have shots that are two to four seconds. You know, two to four, six seconds, and you know, sometimes you'll get these awesome time lapses, and I agree. They should be held for 10 or 11 seconds, but you do not, and usually when I do that, I don't feel comfortable leaving the frame alone. I'll actually introduce a subtle zoom or something in uh, Final Cut just to zoom in slightly or zoom out slightly, just to add a little bit of movement. Uh, the big thing about video is you always want to have something moving in the frame. You don't want to have just everything still, then it looks like a photo, and things just start, I mean, it just starts getting boring. Uh, videos at or below two minutes, in almost every case, uh, you will be amazed at how many people will start diving off of your videos. Universally, it doesn't matter if you've shot the most amazing video on the planet Earth, and this is possible. I mean, you could shoot this amazing thing, and you're still going to lose people after two minutes. It's just, it, the engagement of a video always looks like that. It's a backwards S. You know, you'll have a lot of people, then they'll start diving off, then it'll even off toward the end, and you'll keep that loyal 10 to 12 percent. Thank you if you're one of those people that managed to make it through a video. So, but, but you know, at or below two minutes, again, this is meant to be broken. If you're, shoot, if you're producing, uh, you know, a nice story, so to speak, or uh, a web series, you know, any, you know, something that's more TV quality, you can, you can go longer, for sure. But don't, but, but always be erring on the side of how can I make this shorter? What, what can we cut? Because if you do that, then you're going to get rid of all the bad stuff, and you're going to have nothing but the good stuff. Okay? Make sure your videos are going somewhere. Again, I talked about this, you know, if, if it's a lightning strike, you don't want to get 50 seconds of driving long. It might be fun to ride with you for 50 seconds. I, I just, I don't know if everybody on the internet is going to agree with that. So, uh, and, and also, uh, it, it just, we'll, we'll leave that alone. But, uh, you know, make sure they're going somewhere. If, if it's, uh, you know, I always say, in, in school I was taught, you want to have everything you produce have a quest, a conflict, and an epiphany, aka a beginning, middle, and end. So, you know, start the video off with a nice, you know, start, and then uh, give it a great conflict in the middle, you know, something that's going on, what are you trying to solve, and then give them a good solution. So, you always make sure they're going somewhere. And then, also, the, the last thing, just grade your colors on, on, on video. Every video camera, almost universally, unless it is a very small handy cam camera that kind of does all this in camera, which you're letting the machine do it, but that's also fine because they're also great cameras. But you just go in, you, you, almost universally, you got to bring the saturation up at least 10 to 20 percent to get the colors right, or else there's going to be too much gray, it's going to be too flat. And then I try to introduce a little bit of contrast to make the video pop, because it just, it usually is kind of flat. So, let's talk about distributing video. Um, you know, this is a market that's changed a lot in two years. I mean, two years ago, I, if I was to give this talk, I would have said, you've got to put it on YouTube, and there is no other, there is no other solution. Today, actually, uh, today, interestingly enough, you have Facebook, who is about to introduce the video monetization, so if you're into that sort of thing, and to make advertising revenue off your video, that's coming within the next 12 to 18 months, they're going to be monetizing video. Uh, Twitter, they just introduced a video feature, uh, and uh, what Bob talked about, and 
uh, all these other guys. If you want to report, the best way to do it, in my opinion, and the, probably the most efficient, would be to take the video on, on your cell phone or something and on Twitter and then just send it to them, like at NWS Pueblo or Buffalo or Norman or whatever, and they can see exactly what's going on. You just say what you're seeing, where you're at, and you can, you can get them the information they need very quickly, and they'll, they'll have verification and or just, you know, whatever. So they will have that information, and that's great. Uh, the idea <coughs> link, again, is two minutes online. Uh, that is shortening every year with the rise of mar uh, micro video, actually. Um, uh, this is an interesting trend on the video market because uh, Instagram and Vine, that's 15 seconds and 6 seconds max. Twitter is 30 seconds. And you say, well, what in the world can I do with 15 seconds? I'll show you on the next slide. But, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, you need to have a good idea about what you're doing when it comes to uh, distribution strategy if you're wanting to reach an audience. Now, if you just want to have your store friends see it or something, just upload it onto YouTube, you're fine. But if you have any uh, delusions of grandeur, so to speak, or something, you want to reach people and show them these awesome videos that you make, and most everybody who puts time into editing a video wants people to see them, uh, you know, you, you got to follow some simple rules like that. Okay, so in micro video, it, that's a video if you can play it. Yeah. This is what you can do in 15 seconds. This is uh, maniacal laugh for me. <laughs> You know, it's a microverse yeah, out, of my front, out of my front door in Norman. One of the coolest weather events in 2011, and, was, and bam. You know, that, I put that up on Instagram, and it got, you know, probably a thousand views. <coughs> so, oh, no, that's fine. Uh, and, you know, uh, it, it's a cool platform for sharing raw clips. Again, if you want to report, 15 seconds of video will probably suffice to say, hey, there's a tornado going on six miles east of the Denver. That, that's enough to know that there's a tornado going on. So you know it's a great uh, it's a great recording platform. So let's talk about the uh, copyright issues and uh, selling your photos and videos because this is something else. The first thing is that anything on the web is going to be easily stolen. You need to watermark it, but don't fool yourself into thinking it's secure. I can anybody who's any good at this stuff, and it's not it's not hard at all. Anybody in this room can do it. You can go onto YouTube and you can download cool videos. Just with just a simple app on like Firefox or Safari or Chrome. It's just you know, video down the ring, bam, you got the videos. So, you know, you, you can't protect, so make sure if you upload it, you want it, you, you, you don't have any problem with it being stolen. Again, that's why you want to upload not your best quality stuff in terms of pure technical quality. If you're shooting, say, for instance, 4K, you probably don't want to upload your clips in the absolute best quality 4K that you can, or else, you know, people are going to have it. Uh, you know, don't fool yourself into thinking it's secure. Uh, photos, you know, they'll, you'll see these sites with right-click protection, and that's great, but if you're any good at HTML or looking at code, you just simply go in there, you find the full photo, and you can just click on it, and then right-click and save, and bam, you got the photo. So, again, that's why you do not upload the full res stuff. Uh, and then, you know, you'll get, you'll get this if uh, the news media contacts you, but we'll give you credit. Your answer should be, I, will that be American Express? Will that be Visa? Will that be MasterCard? Because if, if you, I'm telling you, uh, just, just a simple, uh, just a rhetorical question. Can anybody name the last five guests or last five video clips and who had them on CNN or Fox News or MSNBC? I mean, can, I mean, the last five you saw, can you name those last five? I mean, most people can't. So if you think you're going to get any kind of exposure or <coughs> lasting bump from this, people are going to see it there and say, oh, that's cool. And then they're going to go back to sipping their lattes and doing their conversations. They're not going to remember. So if someone contacts you wanting to use your photo or video, understand one thing. If they've contacted you, someone who is being paid by a company, your video has value. Because if someone's willing to invest in someone to contact you, they're also willing to invest in paying for it. So, you know, and, and the big thing is, is that storm chasing is expensive. It really is. Uh, sometimes $100, $150, $200 a day. And uh, if, if you're going to storm chase and someone's willing to pay you for a video, you should probably take them up on that just because you can, you can make back a chase season, you can fund operations, and it just works. So that's just one thing. Just, uh, and, and the end result is everybody in this room is helped if you don't give your stuff away too. I mean, selfishly, that's the case. If everyone's giving their video away, video has no value. And, uh, you know, if you're putting money into shooting video, it has some value. So if you're going to just give away, that's, it's a commodity. You don't want to do that. So that's all I have, actually. Uh, I do recommend, if you want to, uh, follow me at Tornado Titans. That's my Twitter name. It's what we are on Facebook, what we're on Tumblr, Instagram. Whatever social network you're on, I'm not on Snapchat, though. So if any cool kids are out there on Snapchat, I'm sorry, I'm not on it. But uh, so yeah, that's what I got. So uh, come do my time. 
All right, yeah. 20 minutes early. That's pretty good, actually. About one minute. So I'll take uh, any questions. I have no problem. Yeah, uh, yes, how do I watermark items? Uh, I, 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 I have a preset and aperture, actually, for this very thing. Where, you know, I, I can, I, I set a preset, I make the watermark, it's a transparent PNG file. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you've seen them on my photos, like that one, you know, you see it's a tornadotitans.com print center. I actually set it as the aspect ratio. Uh, for instance, I put my, I shoot usually 16 9 photos, so I do 1920 by 1080p. Uh, and it just, that's the size of it, and I just put the watermark in there, and if I'm exporting that size, then it's going to be on the box now. So, you know, it's just a transparent PNG, and most, most things will do that. If you want to just put it in to drag it into Photoshop, just create it, like, you know, size it up towards that size, and then you can just click and drag it in, and then it'll be great. So. <coughs> yeah, yeah, same thing with the videos. The exact same thing, actually, and that's just how I do it. Just use those transparent PNG files, and it works perfectly. Any other questions? So comment on uh, sharing uh, your photo video, yep. like find uh, people other good places, uh, stormtrack.org, yep. some website that is of buying for uh, <coughs> places that's undergoing a major uh, overhaul right now, it's going to be integrated with Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. and all the various social media. So, and unlike Facebook, you never know who's going to see it on Facebook. Stormtrack.org can reach anybody. That Track. Yeah, 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 John, you're completely right. Yeah, if you didn't hear that. Stormtrack.org is actually going through a redesign right now. I know Steve Miller, okay, there's several Steve Millers and Storm Chasing, but uh, Steve Miller, okay, has taken it over and he will, it's going through a complete redesign. So if you're not on there, you probably want to be just to see uh, this wealth of knowledge, too. There's, there's this wealth of knowledge on Stormtrack.org that you can learn from people. So, uh, you know, are people on their videos in a tax Yeah, that, that's basically it. It's just for a bit that, especially, uh, you know, I, uh, I work with a company that does that. And what, what it is for is just because that's just demo video for news networks to see and such. And it just kind of lets them know that if you put this on the screen, it's going to have a big knock for broadcast on, on your broadcast. And you're going to look really silly. It's going to be pretty easy to prove you took it off of YouTube. So it's, it's just, that's just what they do for that. And like last night, somebody's video had a brand new sweet spot. Yeah. And obviously, I'm not recording. Yeah. I just turn it off because it's really annoying. I just focus on the yeah. ladders and I can't get down. <laughs> is there a way that you can do all that demo stuff and do it without putting it in a sweet spot and a nice spot and reaction that? There, is, there are ways. Like, well, for my personal stuff, I do. I, use, I mean, that's the almost standard watermark I use. I mean, I, that's just that's what we've used since 2009. So I, we're, we're, we're amazing at change sometimes. But, you know, I, I do that, and it's never been a problem, but, you know, it's, it's just th they have a different uh, reason for putting stuff up there than, uh, than a lot of storm chasers. Now, if you're a storm chaser, you know, you can put that up there. Or just make sure it's watermarked somehow. I mean, a top, top or bottom, something like that, and it will take care of that. But, yeah, I, 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 there, there's no way to fix that. It's just uh, company policies and such, and that's just how they do it, just to make sure that it's all up and on the up and up, and they have different motivations for being on sides, but I mean, you know, some amazing video from those companies, I'm sure. I got a question about the uh, watermarks themselves. Like, okay. Like, what piece of the software would you recommend? Okay. Uh, yes, what piece of the software I'd recommend to create one? Uh, just basically, uh, Photoshop works. Uh, also, if you are on a Mac, you can do the same thing in Pixelmator. It's a $30 Photoshop clone. It's an awesome piece of software I use. So either Photoshop or Pixelmator, both of those work for that. And any, really any kind of image editor that you can export a transparent image. I, I'm not sure which other ones there are, but those are the two main ones for sure. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he asked about how do you get the friends to know what's the problem.
process. You basically get your get, get your image processed for sure. That's the first thing you do is to make sure that it is completely processed and it looks good. And then you use a photo lab of some kind. I usually use an online one, uh, Bay Photo. You have Intix. You have Meridian. Those are three really good uh, labs to use. And I, I mean, I use Intix personally. I mean, you can see they're working on our booth back there. Uh, Intix is a great lab to use for printing. Yeah. 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 Well, I, you know, I, I usually shoot the 16:9 just because of the nature of the camera I use, because I also shoot video on it. So it's a, it's a weird balancing act. But you know, cropping is part of it. You know, it's part of the printing process. You know, you can do just find a print size that will crop good with what you've shot. You know, whatever that is. Tim, did you have a question? Tim asked a really good question. What are the must-haves for uh, equipment if you're buying a camera? And that, that, is, uh, that is a great question. Uh, first, first one, tripod. Every, everything you buy needs to have a tripod. I see a lot of tripods out here. You're, you are very cool people. So a tripod is the very first thing. Second thing, if you're buying a video camera, get a microphone. Uh, always budget in you know, an extra $100 to $200 for a microphone. Micro, the, the audio coming out of a typical camcorder is going to be pretty low quality, and that's the difference. I was taught in school, audio is 51% of your image. You know, that, that sounds crazy, but if your video sounds low budget and low key, it's not going to look good. I mean, you're going to, you're going to see it as uh, amateur, so invest that extra money in that. And another thing I always, always, always do is, and this, this seems obvious, but I buy two to three extra batteries for the camera because you know, you know how that goes. So if, if I ever ran out, that, that is, I have nightmares about that, you know, shooting a tornado and my battery dies. You know, that's, that's one of the worst nightmares in the world, I think, for me. So, yeah, the, the, those are the three I would recommend most importantly. And then uh, if you're wanting to shoot video, I also use filters. Oftentimes, like grad, graduated UV filters to allow a little bit more dynamic range because cinema cameras have a lot, so I usually, I, I use those. Do you have a question? What, uh, Okay, that's a good question. Uh, yes, what kind of cameras and lenses I'm using? I actually, I, I am the guy that's off the beaten path for sure. I don't use Photoshop, I don't use Lightroom, so and I don't use Canon or Nikon, so I, I am that guy. But uh, the, all of my images you saw up here were shot either. Actually, a couple were shot with a Nikon D40, six megapixel monster from back in 2009. But most of my images were shot with a Panasonic GH3. And uh, that's a micro four thirds. The sensor is about the same size as 35 millimeter, and it's a great hybrid still video camera. Uh, Sony also produces great ones. They're A7S, they're A77, etc. Those are great cameras. So any more of the cameras out there, the lenses, they're all capable of producing great stuff. I mean, if you have an iPhone, you have a camera worthy of most every situation, unless the bike gets low and you're in trouble. So. That, that is, uh, yes, what camera I'd recommend uh, as a basic starting point. That's a very complex question. It depends on your budget, first off. I mean, if, if you're starting off and you have $3,000 to spend, it's going to be different than if you have 500 But generally, if you want to get started, I would recommend looking at uh, either the low-end SLRs or mirrorless cameras from Sony, uh, Panasonic, Olympus, uh, Canon, or Nikon. If you're wanting to do hybrid, uh, Canon and Nikon aren't really that great at it. Their video is not as good a quality as the Sony's and Panasonic's. And even the Olympus, they just released really a camera last week that is just absolutely phenomenal video and their stills are incredible. He asked, uh, you know, when you have a scene where the edge of the, where the sky is blown out, and what, what can you do to fix that? Well, the first thing, there's a process called exposure blending. You know, you know, the thing is, cameras, you know, a lot of people, they have to think about realistic looking images. You don't want to do much post-processing. Well, your camera inherently produces unrealistic images compared to what your eye sees. 
So a lot of people will shoot several frames of the same scene, like it, it, and use different exposures, and then they'll go in and post-process and, and just look this up. It's called exposure on YouTube or wherever, and you'll get you'll get good tutorials, and it'll basically you'll get the you know, the sky with blue around it, and then you'll get the you know the bottom. You can get it exposed right. You just blend all these things together so you get what your eye saw, which is the whole scene. You know, you see all of this with your eye. You don't look at a storm and go, "Oh man, that's really wide right there." No, I mean, you see, you see the blue sky next to it, so that's how, that's how you do that. And, uh, the big thing with that is just, you know, again, just be modest with it, too. Don't go too far with your edits, and it'll look great. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I mean it, 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 you just got to be careful with uh, how you blend things and such. And, but, yeah, just look that up uh, on YouTube. It's called Exposure Blending. And it's not like HDR. It, 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 it's, it's like HDR, but it's the better version of it, I guess, is the best way. Because, you know, HDR, you get these crazy contrasting colors that come out of it. It's just like, okay, that, that looks weird. And you know, I've, I've never been a fan of it. Some people like it, but I, I, I usually do exposure blending. Uh, one thing I will say is that all the images on here, except a couple of stacks, are all single exposure. And I try to shoot just single exposure just because the blending and stuff. I, it, it takes a little bit of time, and I, I, I'm more serious about video than photo. So I try to just get it all at once. So when you're doing the exposure blending, see that meter where it's like negative three, zero, positive three, something like that. The first thing, if you're just shooting single exposure, the best way to do it is just expose one tick to the right. Usually it gives you ticks. And expose to the right just for a single exposure because then you've got your shadows lifted out because if you've got an area that is really underexposed and you try to bring it up, you're not going to have nearly as much detail and nearly as much, uh, uh, you're going to have a lot of noise, I guess is what I'm saying. So you want to expose it to the right. And otherwise, you just kind of want to, uh, most HDRs, you know, it, they shoot plus one, zero, minus one is the best way to put it. So, you know, a few ticks right. I, it depends on your camera how this is, but it's usually plus one, zero, and minus one. And that should take care of it and give you enough detail with the raw image to work with that. Do you have a question? Okay. okay. Especially for lightning, and that's a good—that's a really good question. Uh, you know, one of the things I've always done is I will look for a light on the horizon. And, you know, sometimes the storms here and there's a light over here. I will focus on that because, I mean, if, if that light is in focus, almost certainly your lightning is going to be in focus. Especially if you're shooting a deeper depth of field. So you know, you know, look over here for this light, and you know, you can focus on it. You know, get it in focus, and then your lightning will almost certainly be. Almost always, it's going to be at or near infinity. That'll almost always result in being in focus. So the best way to do it is in manual focus, just to make sure you manually do it so you don't try to auto-focus on anything. I see Mr. Kiesling in the back. To answer someone's question about not for broadcast, if you read the terms of service on every social media, YouTube, Google Plus, Facebook, anything, anything you put out there on their servers or services is free for the media to use for whatever. So unless you mark it, Properly watermark, but not the broadcast. You're pretty much giving away your social security number or credit card because, like Chris said, they're paying you someone to contact you. They're going to pay you for it. But if you put it on a free media site, that is free for them to use. All they have to do is put credit to YouTube, and you just piss away maybe a thousand dollars or more. So <laughs> that is why it's not the broadcast. Yeah, thank you, Doug. So, any other questions? Okay, he, uh, he asked about which filters I use. I actually almost exactly. certainly, I always put a UV filter on the front of my lens, and that's not to add to the image quality. It's just for, to protect the front glass. Because you, I, I like having something in front of it, a high quality UV filter, because then if you drop it, and you know, your lens hits a rock or something when you drop it, most likely a UV filter is going to be the thing that shattered on your lens. And it saves your lifetime and also keeps dust from getting on your lens, that sort of thing. So I use that almost certainly. And then uh, for storms, I use grad ND filters a lot of times. For video photos, you can do exposure blending and stuff and make it a whole lot easier on yourself than just using a filter. But for video, if you want to get that wider, uh, con you know, that wider uh, 
dynamic range, you need to use a gradient heat filter because it'll darken the sky and the bottom won't be as dark. And you'll be able to get a little bit better uh, dynamic range of the video. Any other questions? You good? Okay. I guess I'll turn it over to Roger. Hey folks, we're going to take a break now. Uh, it's almost 10.30, let's say till 10.45. And uh, there's actually coffee over here. And I yes. think there's some pastries and some things. Uh, delicious. Yes. Yes. 10.45.